I can hear the ocean, Jay. Oh, hi everyone, and welcome back to the final episode of the great retro header build-off here at the Vibrant R&D Center. My main man Jay here has finished our header and exhaust, and I must say it's rather sexy, so let's take a look. So Jay, it was a pretty cool process to watch this whole thing come together and to pass you the occasional tool during the process. <laughs> how, how do you feel about it now that it's done? You just, are you just relieved that it's over? No, I'm not relieved. I mean, Aaron and I being fabricators doing this project, we always look back and we always can say, oh, I could have made this better, I could have made that better. Sure. But, you know, you have to weigh out time versus um, uh, effort put in and, and tools at your disposal or time at your disposal. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for I mean, for doing something like this again, yeah, there are little tweaks I would do or mm -hmm. make or make adjustments to, but I mean, I think this is a great first prototype. Oh yeah, and I think it's a great piece for you to really enjoy in the car. We made it equal length. We documented how it goes together. We can reproduce it if we need to because we have a jig and we have all that information handy to us. Yeah. So um, as far as how it sits right here on the table, I think for a first piece it turned out great. Yeah. And then uh, it fits in the car perfect. And it does, yeah. Can't complain that way. We'll show you momentarily how it all goes in there. Do you want to maybe just quickly summarize like the tubing diameters that you use, the components that you use just to kind of you know, give people a quick yeah. stats sheet on the system? Well firstly, everything that you see on the table is vibrant, uh, is in the vibrant catalog or in the vibrant uh, website. Well, you obviously used what is it, two and a half inch tubing, is that right? We went two and a half inch? Yeah, two and a half inch tubing to a uh, 18 inch by four inch resonator, uh, uh, braided flex or braided interior flex. Okay. And then again, two and a half inch up front. And then we have the Jesse Catalytic, which is um, a four by two and a half inch inlet and outlet. V bands at both ends, or actually V bands everywhere. Everywhere, yeah, it's super so, easy to get in and off the car. Header to midsection, midsection to tail section. Yep. Um, vibrant muffler, uh, hangers. We had a box of hangers that we brought from the catalog. Um, and what else? Spring kits. Spring kits, geez, yeah, the yep. collector. Yeah. Uh, now, well, maybe we should make an exception. We had to make this flange for the header. Right. So we don't have that in our catalog. Yes. But for the purpose of doing the build and the comparison, uh, you know, to get us going, this is our one component that we had an exception of where we, we didn't have that. But, right. You know, now we have the information on it. Maybe if there's enough demand for it, we can, can make those plans. We'll yeah. 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 Awesome. Okay. Well, I think it's time to maybe go bolt it up and then have a peek at what the uh, other guys did on their B BMW 2002. Well, it still looks pretty from up here. It hasn't yeah. changed, has it? No. Nope. But We've it had enough is. views of it up here, that's for sure. <laughs> we <Yeah>. have. <laughs> and it is nice to see the whole thing done with all the, the coolant system that we weren't really planning on necessarily when no. we first sat down and talked no. about the project, but it, it made sense to make room for the header design with this upper neck and so it led into yeah. all this aluminum niceness that you did for us, which was fabulous. It did simplify things. It did, yeah. We, it looks awesome. It does. It has a really cool like hot rod love to it, which I love, and we even got to use your uh, stainless steel T-bolt clamps, yep. which are obviously just nicer looking than a worm clamp and a lot more probably even pressure. and. Yeah, they do hold up a lot better. Uh, you've got a nylon uh, lock nut here, um, four ply silicone holding everything together with the uh, nice and wide T bolt clamps. Uh, everything's rooted nicely. It's all, again, items that we can uh, get from our vibrant performance catalog, and uh, we put it all together. Again, the only thing we had to adapt that wasn't in the catalog was the flange that actually goes to the engine. Right. We don't make anything specific right. for it, but in this particular case, we got you going, we're all said and done buttoned up nice and nice and uh, looks great. It does, it looks beautiful and um, behold the awesomeness of our completed exhaust system. And in case you're wondering why it's not tucked up here in the center tunnel, that's because there's a drive shaft in there people, it's rear wheel drive. And as you can see it's a relatively straight shot to the back, although it wasn't as easy as theirs, was it Jay? There was more work here. Uh, we had a few yeah, bends we, to deal with. Yeah, we did tuck everything up a little tight. You know, we have the, we're in the seat area here, we wanted to keep this uh, tight. If we kept everything level, say with this lower area of the rear section, mm -hmm. this midsection exhaust, I know that sounds funny, but yeah. <laughs> if we drop this down, we'd have a you know considerable amount of sag here. So we kept it as tight as we could, yeah. within reason. We reused a factory pickup uh, or factory hanger location, yep, yep. which was nice to be able to do that. Yeah, which uh, supports the front half of the exhaust really well. Yeah. Uh, as we move back, again, we use the V bands throughout the system. 
Um, you move it around, it's got good no, clearance. No yeah. knocking anywhere, yeah, so yeah. that was good. Yeah. Uh, this was a bit tricky getting back here because we got a lot, of, as you can see, we got a lot of weld joints, but um, it was hard getting it over the axle with minimal clearance to the top of the trunk or the bottom of the trunk, I'll say, from inside the car, and then, you know, getting this to line up and exit nicely for the rear bumper. I think you probably remember we had a piece of tape across That's here, right, we did. Yeah, to simulate out. the bottom line of the rear bumper. Yeah, so this, this turned out really nice. It fits well. It doesn't knock when you shake it around. Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to be in a really good shape. No, I think it's going to sound cool too. I should say thank you for all your hard work. I really appreciate it. You did an amazing job. Awesome. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Uh, proud to show it off at the racetrack. And yeah. Maybe if we ever go hard parking, Pete, although that's not really our deal, uh, we'll show up to hard park with Art because that, you know, he's about that life. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys will hear this thing run sooner or later, but uh, it's just exciting to have it done and it's given me a lot of inspiration to get on to the, the next steps in the build. So thank you, Vibe, for the performance. Now it's time to take a look at what these guys did on Art's BMW 2002. Obviously, I think the thing that is most eye-catching about it is this crazy knot of spaghetti. Did you, was that what inspired your design? Was it <laughs> yeah. the knot of spaghetti look? Art loves pasta, I so he pasta said, guy, you know, yeah. I want to look under the hood and, and see a bowl of pasta hanging off the side of the engine. Molto bene. Right. But really, Art, what is that about? <laughs> It's a group five style header. Okay. So back in the 70s and 80s, they had a class for older German, or I think it was a class for every single car manufacturer to enter, but they, uh, they built headers in these engines that looked similar to that. Okay. Uh, probably, I think it was for more mid-range and torque. Okay. They wanted to extend the length of the header. Sure. So this one's very long. We think we measured, what was it, 30 centimeters? The primaries are 35 inches. 30, 35 oh, wow. inches. 35 inches on the primaries. Um, this is very, very long, and uh, I'm hoping to make a lot of torque with it. Okay. And do you buy this, Jay? Do you think this is going to make torque, or what? Well. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, as someone no, who builds no. headers for a living, is this going to work or what? Well, I mean, I hope it does. It's really hard to tell until you get on the dyno. Yeah, but I mean, I really, I really like the way it turned out. In particular, this uh, tail section here is really well done. I like the way that that, that whole thing kind of flows together. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a really well together, a uh, really well put together piece. It's a bit smaller primaries, but I think uh, engine displacement is also a bit smaller on your yeah. engine too. Yeah, what, is, what size? Oh no, you're two, two liter, so same as ours actually. What two is two liter, liter, but the mm -hmm. valves are really small, single valves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe the CFM isn't as much, but definitely it, not. Yeah. Again, it's another piece that turned out really well. The exhaust work from top to bottom turned out really nice. What do you make of this though? What is this about? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's common in tail sections of headers. I don't know if that particular setup works, but I can see it helping if you didn't have it at all. And what's the theory behind that, guys? It'll, it'll act as a venturi, but also as an anti-reversion to help prevent the uh, pulse waves from the valves traveling back towards them. Okay. So once they come through that final collector, everything, all those pulses and stuff are going to stay flowing downstream. So by increasing that radius, reverting. it's like slowing the airflow temporarily? Well, there's a, there's a pipe inside that come, comes into the middle of the chamber, uh, right? I see. So it's like so a trap almost. Yeah, almost. It's like one of those like Chinese finger torture traps. Yeah, maybe okay. it is. <laughs> Don't put your fingers in there, guys. The rest of the system is made with very similar components that we use, obviously. Yeah, it's all two and a half inch piping on the exhaust. Uh, we've got a universal six inch body uh, round muffler. All our hangers, we've got a flex, we've got our Jesse Kettler converter. Everything's... You V-banded everything. Yeah, everything's V-banded together, so uh, installation and servicing is going to be really easy. Underneath the 2002 here, and it's a very clean chassis art, well purchased, and uh, I like the way the exhaust fits up nice and tight on the tunnel here. The header comes all the way to here, which is crazy. It's pretty far back. <laughs> it's yeah. a long header. Behind the transmission. You've done a little upturn here, to, I guess, to create a a ground more. clearance yep. for the cat. Is that right? Exactly. And then it's a nice straight shot back to the rear where things get really tight. It's very tight. Yeah, the yeah. Like to step over that. Well, this is just like a chassis brace here? It's a sub, that's that's part the of the subframe for the rear. And my God, you can like... I can't get my fat wallet in there, Peter. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how you guys manage that one, but... I like the way that you've, uh, well, th that's the factory location for the muffler. That's the where the factory muffler goes. It's almost the same style looking muffler. It's a circular like, oval style okay. pipe that just goes right through. Any challenges? Like the hangers in here are crazy, Aaron. You yeah. made like some. There were no hangers on the car. I don't know how the exhaust, I can't even it remember how it was hung hopes and dreams off. before. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, so I had to make hangers to hang this exhaust. The hangers that are there, there's like two at the back and that's all you've got to go with. Yeah. 
It's pretty neat seeing the header from the top side here and the amazingly tight amount of space you guys had to work with. The way yeah. the engine sits on that angle. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see why it's got that not a spaghetti look because it's that's all the space you had to work with. When I originally got the car, it was kind of my concern, you know, mm -hmm. working at Vibrant, I wanted the best looking header I could possibly put into this car yeah. and show off the ability of the company and yeah. what we have. Yeah. So uh, when I talked to Aaron, I told him, I'm like, I need this thing to be like the centerpiece of the engine bay. And yeah. once the engine bay is all done and it looks like an engine sitting in a bathtub and it's all cleaned up, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tucked and shaved. But uh, once that's all done, I just wanted that to be like, a showpiece, piece. yeah, exactly. and it is. I mean, it looks amazing. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. I'm excited yeah. to hear it. Same I want to. I want to see how it changed the engine out of the car. Likewise. Mm -hmm. I guess when we get back together, in the very, very end, you might hear both cars run. I don't know if Connie will be running yet, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. And that's a wrap on the great retro header build off here at Vibrant Performance. Thanks, guys, for all your hard work. And now it's your chance to have your say on who built the coolest system. We're going to use this fancy polling system up in the top right corner up there somewhere. If you want to vote, just click on that and you can go and tell us who you think built the winning system. Obviously you're on our channel, so you're gonna vote for the Celica and Jay. I mean, the thing is a work of art. But you should jump over onto the Vibrant channel too, watch their whole series, be fair about it, and then pick your winner. Or just vote for who has the best beard. In the jungle. <laughs> All right.